Today, I'm testing the LaserPecker LP5, a big step up from the LP4 and possibly a contender for the best desktop laser of 2025. With two powerful lasers in one compact machine, it can engrave almost anything. First, I'll show you exactly what's in the box, how to set it up and how to connect everything. I'll also run tests on different materials and I'll share all the settings I use. So if you want to try it yourself, you'll have a solid starting point. But there's one thing I'm especially curious about. I want to try something I haven't really seen before. A practical application using this brass cylinder. More on that a little later. Laserpecker sent me this machine for testing. But as always, part of the deal is that I have full freedom to share my honest opinion. You'll find the links in the description to the machine itself and all the materials I use in this video. Let's have a look at what's in the box. Right on top, you got a materials pack. I'll take a closer look at that later, but it's quite packed compared to what I've seen included with other machines. Then there's the base for the laser stand. It's really solid, with threaded holes for mounting fixtures, and some nice padding underneath to keep it from sliding around on your table. In the second tray, you'll find the manual, some tubing for the exhaust system, and fittings to connect it to the machine. The protective cover comes next. It has a built-in electric fan that connects via USB, and a magnetic visor you can easily remove and reattach. There's also a small box with a USB stick tools and all the screws you'll need for assembly. You'll also find a heatsink base for cutting. This used to be a separate add-on, so it's great to see that it's now included. All the cables are packed in clearly labeled boxes, which is a nice touch and makes setup easier. And finally in this tray, the protective glasses. These are good quality and offer full coverage. With the visor on the protective cover and the glasses, you're well covered for eye safety. In the bottom tray, you'll find a support arm that connects the laser to the base. It has a slide riser for adjusting the height, a solid screw to lock the laser in place, and another you can loosen to rotate the laser if needed. Then there's the laser unit itself. It's heavy, solid, and has a sleek, clean design. On the bottom, you got the lens, which is protected by a cover. Exhaust vents for the fan are on the sides. On top are control buttons and a safety switch to abort operation. And on the back, you'll find the connection ports. We'll go over those in more detail during setup. All the parts feel really well made. Precision machine from aluminium alloy with that cool slate blue finish Laser Pecker is known for. Now, let's get it assembled and set up. There's really not much to assemble, and the manual has clear step-by-step -step instructions, so you really can't go wrong. You start by attaching the support arm to the base using four screws. You'll find those along with the necessary tools in the little accessory box. Next, attach the laser unit to the stand using a single solid screw. The machine slides neatly into place so you can't miss. And that's basically it. Assembly done. Now, let's take a look at the connections. You've got a USB-C port to connect your computer, a slot for the security key, the power adapter input, a port for the memory stick, and three additional USB ports for connecting the fan, riser arm, or add-ons like the slide extender or rotary unit. All of these can be daisy-chained, so there's plenty of ports for whatever setup you're using. Here you can also see how smooth the slide riser mechanism is. It moves cleanly and feels sturdy. Once the machine is powered up, you'll see a blinking light on the front. That just means it's not yet connected. You can connect it to your computer with a USB-C cable or wirelessly via Wi-Fi to a computer, tablet or phone. As I was connecting my phone, something wasn't working and I realized I forgot to insert the security key. I'm not entirely sure how useful this key is in everyday use. Maybe if the machine is in a shared space and you want to restrict access. Inside the laser packer design space software, you can set up Wi-Fi on the machine. Once that's done, you can disconnect the cable and connect any of your devices wirelessly. One more step before I can start testing. The protective cover attaches to the laser using two screws. They're a little tricky to reach, but thanks to the removable magnetic visor, you won't need to take the whole cover on and off very often. I also attach the exhaust tube to my air purifier. I really suggest investing in one if you're getting into laser engraving. It keeps my shop clear of smoke and dangerous fumes. Now, let's take a look at the material pack that comes with the machine. Like I mentioned earlier, it's pretty stacked compared to others I've seen. You get a few sheets of base wood, a couple of thin black gloss aluminium sheets, a thicker matte black aluminium sheet, a large piece of brown leather, a steel plate, and even a slab of stone. In addition to that, there are some wooden keychains and two brass coins. I've seen a lot of people emboss incredibly detailed designs onto these coins, so I won't be doing that, but I do have a different idea for working with brass that I'll come back to later. Let's start with a 3mm base wood. I want to test both engraving and cutting, and for that I'm using a function in space design called outline. It automatically traces the outer shape of your design and adds a line around it. I've set different settings for the fill and line layers. To adjust the height of the laser, I enter preview mode. Two red dots appear, along with the outline of the design. I raise or lower the laser until the red dots align perfectly. I've double checked the calibration of this alignment with a ruler, so I know it's accurate. Once that's set, I put on the visor and start the job. 
You can see the settings I used on the screen. These will vary depending on the material and the result you're after, but they're a solid starting point if you want to experiment. LaserPacker also has a settings guide on their website, and the design space includes a great tool for creating test grids, both for cutting and engraving. The result looks great, clean detailing, and the machine had no trouble cutting through the wood. The engraved fill has a slightly darker tint in some areas, so I might tweak the settings a bit, but overall, very nice outcome. Next up, leather. I found this cool card holder that attaches to your phone. I usually pay with my phone, but I still need to carry a card, since not every place accepts mobile payment, so this is a handy way to keep track of it. And since this is my modern wallet, I had a fun idea for the design. Before committing, I wanted to run a quick test. Based on the settings guide, I had a good idea of where to start, so I engraved a small design on the back of the card holder first. It looked good, just a little too deep for my taste. I adjusted the depth settings by 1% and went ahead with the front. If you recognize the reference here, you've probably been around a while and you'll forgive the bad word. The diode laser had no trouble engraving the leather cleanly and consistently, but let's take it one step further and try cutting it too. I'm using the same settings for the fill layer and I'm following the material guide for the cutting layer. Since the design has a few blank spaces inside it, the outline tool doesn't work this time, so I just draw a circle around it and use that for the line layer. Let's take a look. The cut is excellent, clean edges, no burn marks. The fill is nicely detailed, but a little too shallow and not as dark as it was on the card holder. Just goes to show how much settings can vary depending on the material. Up until now, I've only used the diode laser, but the real strength of this machine is the fiber laser, and that's what really sets the LP5 apart. The LP4 had a 2 watt fiber laser, this one has a full 20 watts. If you want to see what the LP4 could do and how it compares, I've got a full review of that machine as well, including more on the Mobile Design Space app. I'll link it in the description. Let's switch to the fiber laser and try some painted aluminium. Another card holder. The same design as the other fits well here too. A modern twist on the classic movie prop. I actually did a quick test off camera and I ended up tweaking the settings a bit from what the guide suggested. These settings work really well for this material and the 2K resolution gives great detail. There's plenty of power in this machine for a job like this. Now let's push the machine even further and try something different. Brass. I have this brass cabinet doorknob and I want to try something new. I've seen people 3D engrave coins with amazing results, but I'm going for a more practical application. Before I got into laser engravers and CNC machines, I used a branding iron to mark my wood turning pieces. Sometimes I still find myself reaching for the branding iron, especially when the shape of the piece makes it hard to engrave directly. So I want to see if I can make a custom branding iron using this machine. I start in Photoshop with my logo. If I make the design with hard edges, I think the thin parts of the design would be fragile. So instead, I'm building a depth map that gives a solid surface to the logo with a gradual depth around it for support. I add an outer glow to the logo and reduce the noise to get a clean shape. I set the glow color to white and I make the logo itself white too. Now in depth maps, white means no engraving and black means deepest engraving. So with everything currently white, we need to fix that. I draw a black circle around the design that gives the background full depth with the glow creating a smooth transition towards the raised logo. That should give us a clean engraving with enough structural support to actually stamp with. Now I export it as a PNG or a JPEG and load it into design space. I set the design to be 1mm larger than the brass piece, just to make sure I don't get a border edge around the design. Then I apply the 3D engraving effect and choose convex engraving mode. It's set by default to engrave in 255 layers. I've seen other people run the full amount and it gets really deep, but it also takes a long time, we're talking 10 hours or more. So I'm going to gamble a bit and try 150 layers, which I think should be enough for what I need. You can see the settings I used on the screen. Looks good so far. Time to attach it to the handle, or for now, my drill, since I don't have a proper handle made yet. I heat it up with a propane burner. Let's take a look. It works, but I hate to admit it. 
I should have gone deeper. The logo has a few thin parts and those burned in really quickly, which meant the base of the stamp touched the surface. With the right temperature and pressure, this absolutely works, but for a perfect result, I'll run the full 255 layers next time. Still, the machine handled 150 layers over 4.5 hours without breaking a sweat. Solid performance. Now, if you've been following my channel, you may have already noticed the other issue. I forgot to mirror the logo before engraving. So yeah, all my brandings are now mirrored. That's 4.5 hours I'll have to redo anyway. Oh well, lesson learned. And that's it for this time. Thanks for watching. I hope you found this rundown of the Laser Packer LP5 useful. If you enjoyed the video, feel free to leave a like or drop a comment. And don't forget to check out my other videos too. See you in the next one.